Hi everyone, it's Henry here, and in this video we're going to take a look at how to paint a Slaves to Darkness Chaos Warrior that's dedicated themselves to Slanesh, or basically a purple scheme. We're going to have a look at a few fun techniques for getting a bit more texture into the model, but also never losing sight of the fact that this is army painting, and whilst we want the models to look as good as we can possibly make them, we also want to get them on the table as fast as possible. For sub assemblies, these guys are pretty simple. The shield arms all come off like this, so I haven't bothered gluing it at all. This will allow me to get into the body of the model and paint any of the armour and details that I need to. I've primed him Chaos Black. Over to Chaos Black Primer, I'm going to give him a base coat of Metal Colour Series Gunmetal Grey, or a dark silver. You don't need to apply this with the airbrush. You can absolutely apply it with a large dry brush, stipple it on, that'll give you some nice texture. But the airbrush is a nice quick way of doing this and Metal Colour Series paints airbrush like an absolute dream. Make sure I don't forget the back of his shield. Now for our highlights, we're going to sponge these on rather than paint them on with a hairy brush or with an airbrush. So I've picked my light source, it's going to come from above and ever so slightly to the right as I look at the front of the miniature. And everywhere that this light falls on the model, I want to use a brighter silver on. So for this, I'm using Vallejo Model Air Steel. I've got a piece of sponge, and I'm using some tweezers to just gradually apply this to all of those areas. Take your time to build this up. Make sure you don't have too much paint on the sponge itself, but you'll see I'm still working with the original amount of paint that I had on there. Only now have I reloaded it slightly. Then I'm touching off all the excess on a piece of tissue paper, before I hit the model again. And what this is going to do is create a ton of chips and scratches and dents and everything into the armour. I think it's really important when we do chaos stuff, but particularly when we do fantasy armour, that we get a bit more texture into them. You know, this stuff has been uh, hand forged, it's been beaten, it needs to have lots of texture in it. We're also going to be doing a clear scheme by which I mean we're going to put a clear paint over the top of this. So if we want to do chips and scratches and stuff, it's quite handy to do them at this point. So it's sort of two birds, one stone. So I'm just taking my time, looking at the model, turning him round, just checking I've got all those areas bright that I want bright. Go back to working on the shield. You see that top curve of the shield we've highlighted up really strongly. And something else we can do to add a little bit more detail, a little bit more definition, go in with our hairy brush, just do a tiny little bit of edge highlighting, areas that we didn't manage to hit with the sponge, or perhaps were too small and uh, intricate for us to get to with the sponge. And generally, I'm still going to stipple this on rather than smoothly paint on the edge highlight as it were. All the time we're just trying to create texture, texture, texture. The vast majority of the work on this model is done at this stage. So this is why we can take a little bit more time. Particularly those focal points. So over our silver armour, or our pre-shade if you will, we're going to apply some thin coats of GW Eidolon Purple Clear. It's an air paint. You'll see me use contrast paints quite a lot in this manner in previous videos. Whilst they're good for this, they're not quite the same as a clear paint or a candy paint you might have heard them referred to as. They're a lot glossier, these paints, and they do allow the pre-shade that you've put under them to show through a little bit more. Contrast paints are a little bit more like an ink, very, very saturated, and you can very quickly overwhelm the work you've done underneath them. These clear paints are a lot more translucent, so a lot of that pre-shade work shows through even multiple layers in. What that means is by building up nice thin layers, we can create a lot of depth 
onto the model. Now I've thinned this using my Life Color Thinner. Any normal airbrush acrylic thinner will be fine. Thinned it one to one, and I'm spraying it at 25 PSI in one of our signature series, Harder and Steenbeck Infinities. When you see me taking the shield off camera, I'm just drying it with my hairdryer. It's really important when we're using these clears because we're building up layers here, and I'm anticipating probably anywhere between five to eight layers of paint on here. We need to make sure each one is dry before we apply the next one so that it doesn't move the paint that's drying on there. You can see that pre-shade work showing through. We've got a really nice purple developing. But we can push it a little further. So into the mix that was in my airbrush already, I've added a couple of drops of Scale 75 Ink Tense Violet. So this is a violet ink. I'd approximate it's something like five drops of the Eidolon Clear to one drop of ink. But you don't need very much at all. It completely changes the paint. And I've just blasted this into the shadows. And you can see it's given us this lovely blue-violet hue in those shadows. It's a bit too glossy for me. It looks a bit too much like a, a boiled sweet. So I'm going to hit it with some ultra matte varnish uh, by Ammo by MIG. A couple of coats of that. I really like doing this on clear schemes. I think it makes the armour look very realistic rather than super candy. Here he is once that varnish has dried and I've just used Vallejo model colour black, whatever black you want to use, to black out all the other details so we can get an idea of what this looks like. I think it's pretty special for very little work. I haven't done this uh, technique for quite a while, really enjoyed the results. Now for the leather parts on the model, I'm going to apply a fairly thin coat of GW Rhinox Hide. I'm not looking for full coverage with this. Because I want that dirty black brown sort of leather look. And I've mixed a little bit of Scale 75 Dubai Brown into my Rhinox Hide. Around 50-50. Again quite a wet mix. I'm just stippling it on. To roughly where the highlights should be. So similar to how we sponged on our metal highlights earlier, I'm going to stipple on these highlights with my brush. And the reason? Texture. There's not much to this model, so it's important we make each area as interesting as we can. And now I've gone in with just Dubai Brown on its own. And even though the coat before perhaps wasn't completely dry, it really doesn't matter. Just stipple in those final highlights. Dubai Brown's also got a very, very matte finish, so it just helps sell that leather feel. Now for his fur, I wanted something quite simple. I didn't want uh, too much contrast. The purple armor's the focal point of this model. It's pretty in your face anyway. If we try and get too much contrast into the model, I think it's gonna be overwhelming. Perhaps fitting for Slanesh, but um, you know, it's us who's gotta play with it. So I've base coated it with GW Skaven Blight Dinge. Then I've added a little bit of deck tan, uh, Vallejo model color deck tan into that. Again, probably a 50-50 mix. And I'm not dry brushing this on because I don't like that chalky finish that we get. So this is sort of wet brushing, I think you'll hear it referred to as. I'm just lightly touching against the fur and letting the paint pick up certain areas of it. I'm not looking for a uniform highlight across the model here just looking to bring a bit of light and a bit of interest. When you look at furs, it's never an even uh, color across it. There's always slightly different tones on there. So I'll just add more and more deck tan into the mix. You can see here, starting on the left, the Skaven Blight Dinge, then I've mixed it into the middle, and then this bit up the top here is almost pure deck tan. Plenty of water, so it's nice and thin. Make sure there's not too much on your brush. And as I say, you're almost dry brushing with it just build that up a couple of times. It's just like the leather really. We're using very very similar effects on all parts of this model. For the bone parts, so the horns and the little bird skull around his neck, I'm going to base coat these using uh, Vallejo model colour US Olive Drab. 
and it's a nice sort of boring brown black uh, brown gray color I've mixed in a little deck tan again into this so again about 50 50 just gonna add some highlights over the top and then I go in with more deck tan so almost pure deck tan at this point and add another highlight in So we're not worrying about super smooth painting on this, we, we're enjoying the textures that we're creating. There we are, that's those done. A few little gold details. I'm going to base coat in scale 75 to cave metal. It's a nice sort of metallic brown colour. And I'm going to highlight those using scale 75 elven gold. This is quite a cold gold colour. It's quite a yellow gold colour. And again, stippling it on to create a little bit of texture as we highlight. For the trim, which there's hardly any of, I thought these models would be covered in it, but actually there's not a huge amount of trim. I wanted to go for a slightly blue a silver so I base coated that in scale 75 black metal. Now here he is with all of the colors blocked in. I'm really really happy with the composition but I'd like to make him look a little more dirty, a little more weathered, a little more interesting. But to get to this stage it's taken us very little time. So I'm going to take some artist oil color lamp black I'm going to take a little bit of artist oil colour burnt umber, so a black and a brown. Then I'm going to add a thinner, in this case Winsor & Newton Sansed or thinner. You can use any mineral spirits to thin these down with. Uh, artists' versions of those tend to be uh, refined and often odourless as this is, that's why we like to use them. We don't need to be varnishing the model or anything, it's all dry so we can use the oil straight over the top with no fear of it destroying any of the previous work. And I'm going to wash this mix all over the metal parts. You see it's running into the recesses nicely. And I'm also going to add a little bit here and there on the model where I want a bit of dirt and grime or where I maybe just want a little bit more definition. As you've noticed we've not done any washing on this model at all up to this point. And we'll leave that to dry. Normally overnight, but on this video, I just put a hairdryer on him on a very, very high heat, but a very, very low power setting because I don't want to move that oil around too much. It usually takes a minute or two and you can carry on working. But if you want to paint over the top of it, you need to leave it at least overnight to properly dry. Now, the last thing I'm going to do is weather up his cloak a bit. At the moment, his cloak's just a flat black colour. This is just the Vallejo model colour black I've put over it. So I'm going to use weathering to add a little bit of interest to his cloak. So in my airbrush I have a very very thin mixture of brown paint. In this case I've used Tamiya Flat Earth. The reason I've used Tamiya is I'm able to thin it down a huge amount and still have control over the paint. I've probably thinned this six or seven drops of thinner, so Tamiya X20A thinner to paint. And I'm going to apply tons of coats of it, probably 10 to 15 coats all in all. And what it will do is we'll just get this dusty dirt effect on his cloak, and just add that little extra bit of interest so it's not just a plain cloak. And here he is finished. I was really pleasantly surprised how fast this model was to paint and I am really tempted now to go this route with the Slaves to Darkness army. Uh, I'm currently painting, especially at the time of recording we're about to get a new Slanesh release uh, and I think the models are incredible for it. But I hope it also shows that we can really combine our various tools, so our hairy brush, our sponge, our airbrush, they all come together and we're able to absolutely rattle through a model which I think still looks very very nice on the table. I think you could feasibly get a unit of these guys done, a unit of 10 done in, in two evenings if that, two hobby sessions. Really really fun, really really enjoyable. 
but the main focus was getting that lovely purple armor, plenty of texture, and you can see on the shield there just how much texture we've got into it. So if you've enjoyed it, hit the like button. If you want to see more from us, hit subscribe. Check out our Patreon if you fancy seeing much more in-depth tutorials, particularly where we cover things like weathering, NMM, painting character models, and let us know what else you'd like to see in the comments. And I'll see you next time.